Hey guys, how's it going? Richard here with Alien Bros, and today I have some awesome new UFO sightings to share with you all, and some news regarding a strange incident that just occurred over Japan a few days ago that has become the target of some serious speculation. We have a possible contact experience with video evidence, and another sighting that was captured two days ago with multiple UFOs recorded flying near an incoming storm cloud, and yet another sighting, which had an entire crowd of people in disbelief as an unknown object was watched by observers with one man's absolutely awesome commentary on the sighting as he explained to this crowd of soon-to-be UFO believers what it was that they were likely seeing. It is a fireball UFO, or as some people have come to call them, orb UFOs. That certainly did defy conventional explanation. Notably, the observer that recorded the sighting even went as far as to say during the recording that the object is, quote, likely powered by Element 115, an obvious reference to Bob Lazar, a well-known self-acclaimed ex-Area 51 employee with some evidence to back him up. Let's go ahead and get into that sighting now. The footage that I am about to share with you guys comes to us from Fort Wayne, Indiana, and was captured on June 18th of 2019. What was it that had this crowd of observers so on edge to the point that they were shouting and exclaiming their disbelief as if this object were able to hear them? And who's to say it couldn't? I'll let you guys decide for yourselves what you believe the object in this footage is, and afterwards we'll analyze it and see if we could get an idea of just what this crowd of people witnessed over Indiana. Now, go ahead and check out this footage. Hey, you guys want to see a UFO? Come up here. I'm serious. If you want to see a UFO, look right there. It's not a drone. It's way too high. The G-force, it turned. Look at that. Hey, man, look at that. Or not. You can look at that if you want, it's just a UFO. Nothing, nothing big. It's just right there. It's, it's got light changing from red to white. It's pretty normal. This is not I mean, I had a really good video. I hope it didn't get deleted because of that phone call. You guys see this UFO? What? It's not my first time seeing one, but you can see that UFO. It goes from red to white, maybe plasma. Oh. It's not a drone, it's moved G-force wise. It can probably move. Is it a UFO? Yeah, I mean, or UAP. Hey, hey, those things are real though. Yeah, aliens are real, we're not alone. If God just made us, he messed up, or she. <laughs> yeah, hey, look, look how it's just floating in the air, what the uh, f Drone craft can float in the air like that at that height. They, we're judging that's 350 feet, so we're talking about 10 to 12 miles in the air. And if you notice, it'll change colors, which is illegal for a drone to turn off its lights. Also, we'd need a green and red light on the starboard and uh, the port side. This is uh, hovering at an angle that is impossible, unless you account for a different propulsion system than nuclear. And to pull a, a 95 degree right angle is that it would kill anyone. What the f That would kill anyone inside. So in other words, what the f right, the propulsion. The propulsion system basically allows them to go at G-force G -force speeds with the feeling only 11% of the G-force you would normally feel. The only, yeah, that's what plasma does when it gets bright. It'll that probably means it's about to turn red. No, it's not. It was a drone. It's moving too intelligently to be controlled by AI. Dude, look at it on my, my, my camera. It's a circle. Yeah, it's an orb. It's a common, common sighting. It's a circular craft. Uh, weirdly enough, it's in the, uh, yeah, it is. It's in the western sky. I called MUFON earlier today, and this is in no doubt what, why this is out here. I've had many experiences since I age four with these, and, uh, I made a call today to, uh, some scientists. And now I was expecting this to happen when I came outside, which is why I had my phone charged. Why I've got it pointed at it, and why it's probably mostly focused on me. That's an impossible Wait, that's aerial maneuver. Circle. That's an impossible a aerial maneuver. Yeah. Stars don't move like that. It's likely powered by uh, element 115. 
I might be wrong on that, but it's likely powered by Elgin Weapon Team. You guys want to see a UFO? Hey, come here! What is it? UFO. A UFO! It's a UFO! I know so. I just called MUFON today and then came outside Why is it moving here. Like... I called scientists today, some of the heads of UFOlogy, and uh, I knew that there was likely going to be a warning for me when I came outside. And that's it. Whether it's a warning or whatever, I don't know. Well, there it is. It's very real. Um, MUFON. Uh, it's a UFO network, not uh, it doesn't comply with any government. Oh, it's pretty crazy. Yes, you can. Fact is way stranger yes, than you fiction. Can, Anna. You see that UFO? You see that UFO? Yeah. It's not my first time seeing one. Definitely won't be my last. That's my brother. He's coming over. His wife. That's pretty nuts. Surveying. Probably. Using the lights changing colors is illegal for a drone to do. And if you guys know anything about the USAF, it doesn't have a red or a green light on the starboard or port side. It can turn its light off and it will reappear if it wants to. I mean, it's really... What's strange is how different it looks on the camera. It shows that it's clearly capable of bending light. You guys want to see a UFO? Look over in the southeast. Or southwest, right there. Right there. How's it going? No, for real. We ain't lying. You guys look no, at, look at, it's look at, like it's moving at such a G-force that it would be impossible for a human to be inside without a propulsion system that wasn't based on uh, element 115. In other words, yeah, it'll change colors. It's about, it's pretty much in the stratosphere at this point, if not out. If you guys want recorded to MUFON, just send the video in, tell them the location, and you can remain anonymous, whatever that means, but, you know. What's interesting to me is that it appears as multiple lights. Um, I'm going to analyze the star map when I get home, when I get a chance to see, see where it's at constellation-wise, like if that might mean something. Is this like what you study to help? Music is what I do, oh. but yeah, I study theology and it's, it's that kind of stuff a lot, I love world religion. Christianity and stuff like that. I love the different elements, regardless of what my faith is. No, I believe, I believe that honestly, man. I mean, regardless of your faith or whatever, but I believe that like you know, oh, there's, some, there's definitely truth to a lot of the old stories that we view as weird. Uh, you know, I mean, there's no way to explain a lot of this ancient stories that have happened that without this stuff being real. You know, and it seems that they usually come at times when we're in need of great cataclysms, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So. Like, what do they do, though? Like, I, I don't think anyone knows, and if they did, they probably wouldn't be here. <laughs> so, honestly, it's it's not so it's they, not something to take lightly, because you, you can get erased pretty easily digitally, and that's what can happen if you speak out a little too much. Really? So what do you guys think? I think that what we're looking at here is definitely nothing normal. Could this be a drone? I think I would have to agree with the witness that filmed this crap and say no. He definitely pinned the nail on the head with his description of drone laws and how this drone, if it were one, would not have been flying legally due to the lights on it not fitting in with the current regulations regarding drones. They need to fit in with these regulations in order to prevent aircraft accidents. Since this could cause confusion for some pilots and for passenger airliners, this could be a most severe law to break since it could potentially lead to the deaths of hundreds of people on board commercial airliners. It is not only illegal, but also morally wrong. However, this is not to say that there are not people out there who wouldn't fly a drone like this illegally. However, the way that the object appears in the footage and changes its color scheme at points in the footage does not fit in with your typical drone and leads me to believe that what we are seeing here is definitely not a UAV. On top of that, this thing is simply floating in the sky, moving randomly, while making some turns that would be impossible for a regular plane or helicopter. What the witness said about the G-forces being too great is indeed the reason as to why this object could not be a conventional aircraft. To top it off, the light scheme of this object and its fireball-like appearance did not coincide with any known earthly object that I can think of. And I have to say, I love the way that this crowd of people reacts when they finally see this object 
after it is pointed out to them by this man, and I must say that their reactions are incredible. This video is also evidence of something else. It shows just how unaware the people in our society actually are of the UFO phenomenon. Just how little of us are actually looking up to the sky and paying any attention. If we simply paid more attention, we would likely notice these objects all of the time. Yet still, most of us don't, and the most important phenomenon of our lifetime, if not the history of our world, simply goes on ignored which is likely what whoever is piloting these objects would love to have happen. They do not want to be seen. Why would they show themselves, some of you ask? Why come down in craft that are completely lit up and easily visible by the human eye? Well, I could think of a few reasons, with the biggest being that the majority of people simply do not pay attention to what is going on in our skies, and those who do are generally called crazy for believing that what they are seeing is UFOs, or objects that defy conventional explanation, and this provides the perfect cover for both the UFOs and the governments of the world to do whatever they want, whenever they want without much worry of people seeing or believing that what they are seeing is actually unknown and possibly extraterrestrial in our atmosphere. It is very easy to get away with showing yourselves when no one believes that what they are seeing is actually there. As they say, however, seeing is believing, and the number of UFO believers and researchers looking into this subject is growing by the day. And as people become aware of this phenomenon, and the true identity of these unknown aircraft come closer to disclosure, our government is having a harder and harder time ignoring us. Now, since everyone has a camera on them at all times, and can videotape whatever they see in the sky at a moment's notice, and start asking questions, the lie cannot go on forever. And they know this, which is why they are slowly starting to come clean, and have admitted that there is definitely something here in our skies, and the presence can no longer be ignored. Nor can observers of these objects any longer be called crazy. With the mounds of video evidence, it seems that you would have to be crazy not to believe what is right in front of our very eyes. This is a perfect example of how people are starting to wake up, but we still have further steps we need to take in waking up the public. I think we may very well have one of these unknown objects here in this footage, and this one had its cover blown. Let me know what your thoughts are on this down in the comments. What did these people witness? Can you come up with an explanation? Alright, let's go ahead and get into our next UFO sighting for today. This next clip is one that I analyzed extensively, and I'll be sharing with you guys both one of my enhanced versions and the original clip, so you guys can see for yourself just what it is that we're looking at in this footage. In the clip, we see what seems to be a fleet of these UFOs that have taken up an interest in an incoming storm cloud for reasons unknown. And whatever these objects are, they certainly are not something that you see every day. It was sent over to us from New Bern, North Carolina, and was captured on June 19th of 2020. I'll go ahead and play the clip for you guys now, and we'll talk more on it afterwards. Here it is. Yeah. Hold on. What we have here is certainly some strange stuff. These objects seem to disappear and reappear out of the storm cloud. After analyzing the footage, I want to say that there are about 8 objects in total, but it is hard to say for certain, since they keep disappearing and reappearing, and that makes it impossible to get an accurate count of just how many objects are actually in this clip. However, we can say for sure that there are certainly a lot of them. What are they doing here? I had a subscriber bring up a valid point to me in the comments of my last video, and as you guys know, I do read your comments and reply to them. I do care what you guys have to say, and I take your criticism to heart. However, he mentioned that there is strong evidence that these beings are after our planet's resources, which is something that we have spoke on before in past videos, and I think that he is 100% correct on that premise. These objects are often spotted near or over bodies of water, and more often than not, in storms like these. We have even shared footage and news stories of UFOs stealing water from our planet's lakes, oceans, and rivers. And on top of that, they also seem to have an attraction to electrical storms. Is it possible that they can use our planet's storms, such as this one, to generate power for their spacecrafts, and in a sense, refuel their vehicles? I think it is entirely possible. This may go against the idea of Bob Lazar's Element 115 claims, but there is likely more than just one race of beings visiting us. And who is to say that there isn't a race of beings that uses energy such as that found in electrical storms to power their ships? I think it is possible, especially when considering the fact that all throughout the universe you can find electrical storms like these both on and off of planets. And you can even use fusion energy created by stars in a similar way to power their spacecrafts if they were to manage to find a way 
way to harness the energy created by these events. It is entirely possible that a race of these beings could use this energy as a source of fuel, something that we as a species have been trying to do in our own way for decades now. Only they are likely actually capable of doing it, and have found a way to utilize these natural resources to their advantage. These events create vast amounts of electrical current, and likewise, stars create vast amounts of nuclear energy. If these beings were to find a way to harness this energy for their own needs, it would be indeed one of the ultimate forms of unlimited energy needed to travel around the universe without the need to use conventional primitive fuels like we use here on Earth today. This may all be theories, but they are theories that many pieces of UFO footage do provide evidence towards having some truth. We may learn to even utilize these energy sources in the future. Imagine if we were able to come across something like a quasar and use the electrical energy created by it to our advantage. If we could learn to turn the energy harnessed by this into a potent form of fuel, along with other technologies that can be used to help create gravity, nullify the effects of heavy g-forces that would typically kill a normal human, and survive for somewhat extended periods in space that would be far too long for our current tech to allow, as in, for years at a time. That is, if it's even necessary with the increased travel speed, then we will be able to move about the deepest reaches of the galaxy and possibly the universe far more freely. This is likely what the beings visiting our planet have already done. At least the evidence of what they are attracted to during their arrival does seem to suggest this. It seems to me that this is exactly what this advanced race of beings has managed to do with their technology, being so much more advanced than our own, and they have managed to harness these naturally occurring resources and use them to travel to our world, and likely anywhere else in the cosmos as well. What purpose might they have here? That is something we have no way of knowing, but clearly they are here, whatever the reason may be. Could this sighting have an explanation? Maybe, but I haven't seen anything quite like what was captured in this video before. But clearly, the objects are very high in the sky, and if they are able to go in and out of the storm clouds, in my book, it rules out drones. And maybe I'm wrong, but I don't see any kind of planes being able to do what these objects did, or behave in this type of manner. The way that they move throughout the storm cloud seems impossible for any normal conventional aircraft, and I believe we may be witnessing some of these extraterrestrials harnessing electrical energy from our storms through the window given to us by this witness's footage. Alright, let's move on to our last and most creepy piece of footage for today. This is the sort of footage you generally hope that you never capture, not in the manner that this woman did. It was captured on June 13th of 2020 in Bethpage, Tennessee. Our witness here had woke up just before 4 a.m. after hearing sounds in her house, immediately assuming that someone had broken in her home. She went to investigate, leaving her small puppy and husband asleep in bed. She went downstairs and saw something that most people do not want to see outside of their homes at 4 a.m., especially not if they heard noises in their house thinking that there was an intruder. I would much rather have seen an intruder than this. She quickly pulled out her phone and recorded what she had seen. The clip that I I'm about to play for you is what she witnessed outside her home that night. The real question now is, what is it? Here's the clip. Decide for yourselves. What in the world is that? Seriously? It's like 4 a.m. And I'm walking out my back door onto the deck. After witnessing this strange set of V-shaped lights in the sky, she goes back upstairs to check on her small puppy and husband to make sure that they're alright. She then goes back downstairs to the patio, and the lights were now gone. Clearly, with a sense of fear that most people would have after hearing strange noises in your home, and witnessing what to me looks like a massive V-shaped UFO, similar to that described during the Phoenix Lights incident, right outside of her home, especially since this was the first time she'd ever witnessed a craft like this. This sounds, in my opinion, like an abduction experience, and we may actually have some evidence of what may have happened to this woman. She does not claim to have witnessed any beings, and she does not claim to have been abducted, but given the aforementioned evidence, it is very likely, in my opinion, that she or someone in her household may have had an experience being removed from her home by ETs, even if she doesn't have any memory of it. 
Is it possible that her and her husband were taken from their bed by these beings in their sleep, and when they returned her to her home, they made noise, and she awoke from her typical hypnotically induced state commonly used by these beings in these sorts of circumstances, which caused her to go down and investigate, and in her investigation, she got a glimpse of the craft that these beings took her and her husband away in before they could leave the scene of the crime. If she did experience this, then I would like to know exactly what it was they wanted her for. She isn't the only person to have claimed to have had these sorts of experiences with these types of beings. The real question here is, what are they after? What do they want with us? Can all of these people that have claimed to have had experiences be crazy? There are millions of them now, and I can't say that every single person who has claimed to have an abduction experience is crazy with good conscience. They can't be. And this woman has more evidence of an experience than most people will ever provide. Usually at best, we get a story, pictures drawn of a supposed witness being and usually drawn while under hypnosis, and we have to take the victim's word for it, something that in a court of law would never hold up, at least not here in the United States. However, this woman has captured actual video evidence of what she witnessed to back up her account, which is far more than what we are ever usually given. Evidence like this would be in most cases heavily considered, and could in some cases either make or break an entire litigation proceeding. Looking at it from the perspective of an equivalent court case, we would look at this as a very important piece of evidence when determining whether or not we would convict someone. We should as well, in this case, examine the tale of the tape and decide for ourselves, based on what we know, if she is telling the truth or not. From what I have seen, I believe she is, and I do wish that she had went outside and filmed the object without the glass in the way. However, be honest and put yourself in her shoes for a moment. You wake up to strange noises downstairs at 4 a.m. with your husband and sleeping puppy in bed with you, and no one else in your home. You go downstairs to investigate what you just heard. You then look out the window and see this floating off in the sky not far from your home. Would you go outside and try to get a closer look, or would you freeze in place? We are lucky that she was able to fight through her fear enough to even grab her phone and record the object, let alone go outside to record it. So quite frankly, I don't blame her. At least we got what we got, and it is certainly better than what we normally get in these types of situations. So decide for yourselves what you believe this object is. What do you think it is that may have happened to this woman and her husband? Let us know down in the comments how you truly would have reacted in this situation, and what you believe the object that she filmed was. I personally do not have an explanation for it, and if you do, then please let us know down in the comments. However, from what I have seen from this witness, I believe her story. Take that what you will and make your own decisions. Alright, let's move on to our news for today. Many of you have probably already heard about the balloon-like UFO that was seen and recorded over Japan a few days ago, which has been blowing up all over Japanese Twitter and was number three on trending the day of its occurrence. If you haven't seen it, this is the object that was spotted. No one as of yet has managed to identify this object, nor who it belonged to, or what its purpose is. The Japanese government has since claimed that whatever the object is, it is in quote, definitely not from us. This leads everyone to wonder, what could this object be? Could it be a weather balloon? If it is, it isn't from Japan. A spy balloon, maybe? It's possible. Some people even theorize that it could be from North Korea, meant to spread North Korean propaganda. However, there is no evidence of this. Some people even went as far as to say that it's meant to spread a word, which I cannot say here on YouTube due to YouTube's policies. However, I will give you a hint. It starts with a C and caused a global panic. I don't believe that that is what this object's purpose is, but it was theorized by many. Finally, we have people who believe that this object was a genuine UFO from another world, and the craft disappeared as quickly as it showed up. I'm not going to say that I think this object is ET, I don't believe it showed any characteristics of an ET craft, but it is certainly strange nonetheless, and I won't be ruling it out, nor will I rule out many of the other theories that were given. However, it is certainly strange, and with the amount of panic the unknown object caused, I felt it certainly necessary to tell you guys about it, and let you come to a determination for yourselves on what you believe the object is. This comes after a news story that we did here on the channel a few days ago, about Japan starting their own program to report these UFOs, and what to do in case of contact. Is it possible that this object was a secret test done by the Japanese government to see how its citizens would react if an unknown craft or object were to appear in their skies? Were they trying to get a feel for just how much panic this would actually induce and to decide if the Japanese people were ready for contact with extraterrestrials? I believe this object bears a striking resemblance to the object drawn by the Japanese pilot that had witnessed a UFO during the Japan Airlines Flight 1628 incident, but it could purely be coincidental. There is, however, a lot 
lot of correlation, and if I were to give my own thoughts on it, I would say that to me, this theory makes the most sense. What do you guys think? Is this the Japanese government dipping its toes into the waters of disclosure to get a reaction out of the populace and get an idea of just how the Japanese population would react if they did in fact come into contact with an extraterrestrial craft and maybe even extraterrestrial beings? Is this a sign of things to come? For now, we can only speculate, but I do believe that it's possible, and there is likely much more to come. We will have to look towards the future to find out. Anyway, that's all I have for you guys today, but stay tuned because there is a lot more coming and we will have it posted very soon. If you liked the video, then please don't forget to hit that like button on your way out, share it, comment, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button and tap that notification bell. It really helps us out, and it'll let you guys stay up to date by sending you a message straight to your inbox every time we upload a video, and you can once again stay on the up and up with all of the latest alternative news. And remember, you have to hit the bell button, or YouTube will not notify you when our new videos come out. Maybe also bookmark the page, because Google seems to be censoring our channel. We are almost certainly being blacklisted, and we need your help to overcome that. If you'd like to help support the work we do here, though, please feel free to support us on Patreon, as we are currently working on new tier lists for our patrons, and we think that you guys will like them a lot. The link is down in the video description. Every little bit that we get helps us out tremendously, and we truly are grateful for it. Also, if you have UFO footage or evidence that you would like us to feature on the channel, please email it over to us, or email us down in the description as well, and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Also, for updates on when our new videos come out, go follow our Facebook page. The link is down in the video description as well. Together, we will find the truth. Thanks again for your support, guys. It really does mean a lot to us, and don't forget to browse the channel if you're new and get yourself up to speed. Let's make disclosure a reality. As always, I'm Richard with Alien Bros, and I'll see you guys again next video.